A very good afternoon to everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for um, our second IT security talk show. Um, my name is Siddharth, uh, or just Sid if that's easier, and I'm joined with and I'm joined today by Vivin, who's our senior technical evangelist from the Manage Engine Active Directory and IT Security uh, Solutions. Um, thank you so much for joining us today and taking time off uh, of your busy schedules uh, for making it for our event. Um, I just want to get a few routine housekeeping things out of the way before we get started. Uh, the first thing is that we'll be sending you some resources um, and a recording of the uh, session at, within a couple of days, so you don't have to worry about um, sharing this material with your coworkers. Uh, and I also wanted to let you know that we are all accessible on the live chat um, throughout the session. So if you have any questions at any point, do drop in a line on the live chat option on the go to webinar panel and we'll try to answer all of these at the end of uh, at the end of the presentation. Um, I also would like to um, use this opportunity once again to um, thank you all for joining us and we hope that uh, this session would be um, would be useful. So today's topic says simplifying sim. And if you're wondering why we uh, at Manage Engine are um, eligible to be doing this, it's because over the last um, 12 months, we've done a bunch of events across the world. Uh, we've done 44 seminars in, in 26 countries, interacting with thousands of administrators. And throughout this experience, having our uh, evangelists go around the world uh, to help admin solve problems, we've come to see that a lot of um, Irrespective of where you are in the world, the technology is the same, the infrastructure is the same, and the security challenges are the same. So we've sort of come to learn uh, common cases that multiple uh, organizations are looking to solve, and we've assisted organizations in solving some of these problems. So the material that we've developed, when we say simplifying SIM, uh, all the tips and tricks and uh, best practices that we're going to share today, um, all of this, we are qualified to say all of this because we've actually been there, done that, and and whatever we speak is is purely based on experience and interactions with administrators, right? So, uh, so today I we, we're going to look at multiple use cases and 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 best practices. As I said, uh, Vivin in particular will be talking about um, the Active Directory side of things, and he'll be focusing on how. Uh, how and why um, Active Directory auditing is important, and he'll be sharing you, uh, sharing with you some um, awesome cases that you can look to implement um, in your organization, right? So uh, I'm just going to get st get started with uh, with the session. So this is what we have uh, have in store over the next 40 to 45 minutes. So we we want to do the presentation and and give you some material and give you some things to think about and give you some things to take back and implement in your organization. And at the end, we want to uh, see if we can have a live Q&A if time permits. Um, and, or, but definitely, if not a live Q&A, we definitely want to answer your questions um, on the live chat. Right. So keep your questions um, ready. Uh, you can drop them on the live chat at any point of the over the course of the presentation, and we'll answer them at the end. Right. So. Why do we need all of this? Right, we're, we're going to emphasize on SIM or Active Directory auditing. Look at some advanced techniques, um, security events to track, and all of that. But this stat that I have right here is why all of this is important, right? And this is from Verizon's 2018 data breach investigations report. Uh, so it's pretty new. And what they found was that 68% of the breaches that they investigated took months or longer to discover, right? This is bad. What, what this means is that organizations are finding out that they have breached maybe four or five months after the compromise happened. So imagine if you in your organization, you found out today that last September or October, one of your file servers was breached, right? This is the reality. 68% is two in three companies uh, approximately, right? So this is the scenario, and this is a start from Verizon's 2018 uh, data breach investigations report. All right. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction, Sid. And hello, everyone, uh, whoever has joined the webinar. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here. Now, as you said, Sid, uh, you talked about 68 percentage of the uh, of the organizations, and the stat was pretty alarming. Now, something along the lines of that is you you told me that I'm going to be talking about uh, the Active Directory side of things. 
So something along uh, the lines is uh, the screen uh, that you, I mean, the picture that you see on the screen right now. So if you just take a closer look at this picture, this is not something that I made up. This is uh, actually a screenshot from uh, the MS Ignite uh, conference, the Microsoft Ignite uh, conference. And according to Microsoft, as and when your first host is compromised, let's say a workstation is compromised or an end user's uh, credential is compromised, a regular user, okay? Now, it takes 24 to 48 hours for the attacker to move up the ladder from a regular user to a domain admin. So it takes less than 48 hours to compromise your domain admin credentials. And is domain admin uh, a powerful credential inside of Active Directory? Absolutely. And 2019, even till date, if you add an inappropriate user inside of your domain admins group, that can either make or break your Active Directory infrastructure in a matter of minutes, right? And it's going to take a, a, a bit of your time and effort to recover from that attack if you're not well prepared. And what is even more alarming, if you just uh, have a closer look at the slide, the second half of the slide, now it takes you approximately four to five months to understand that your domain admin credentials have been compromised. All right, so the discovery time is close to five months. And do you think that uh, with a span of five months that an attacker could cause considerable damage to your organization? Absolutely. So that's the point we are trying to solve in this webinar. So as many indicators of compromise as, uh, as, as that you can set from your logs is going to actually cut short the time that uh, involves uh, uh, involves in uh, the attack discovery. So you need to set as many indicators as possible. You can have a SIM uh, that costs you $100,000, but if that does not have custom indicators of compromise that are not out there on the market, then it's going to be uh, the same case. So yeah. indicators of compromise, that's the whole idea. Absolutely. So we we basically learned, we've seen two statistics from Verizon and from Microsoft, which is effectively saying that um, breaches are taking way too long to discover, right? Whether it's a normal network breach that we read about or whether it's an active directory domain admin, uh, domain controller compromise, right? It's taking way too much time. So with that in mind, real-time alerts can well and truly be the difference between a safe network and a breached one. Right? Because in each of these cases where it's taken months to discover the attack, imagine if that security team, they were getting alerts um, in near real time saying that this is this, there's an issue here, there's a flag on a domain controller, there's a flag on your SQL server. Right? If you're able to receive these kinds of alerts, it's obviously going to accelerate uh, the threat detection and, and, and correspondingly, it's also going to uh, make sure you respond uh, and, and resolve the incident in, in just a few hours as opposed to months. Absolutely, that's the, that's the idea. So real-time alerts and meaningful alerts. Absolutely. Yeah. So of course, it's not as easy. I mean, we, we, we ideally think that, yeah, okay, if we have alerting in place, uh, let me just go and implement alerting and my problem is, is done. But obviously it's not that straightforward. Right. If, if that were the case, we wouldn't even be hearing about um, breaches. So there are a lot of challenges today when we talk about 2019 and going forward. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is, of course, a lot of users are moving to the cloud. Um, they are no longer in the uh, control of your of, of your on premise network. And it can be challenging to to know what are the actions and activities they are performing on the cloud. Right? What if they are traveling and they connect uh, uh, they connect to a compromised Wi-Fi network at a coffee shop. Uh, maybe they use Office 365 or Azure or AWS and all of these uh, platforms have user data interactions. So they could be uploading or downloading sensitive data without without you knowing. Right. So that's a challenge. Uh, of course, you have a whole bunch of uh, advanced attacks such as ransomware. Uh, in particular, ransomware, of course, has been uh, a big trend in cybersecurity for the last couple of years, uh, so much so that just as we make uh, software as a service, uh, the bad guys out there are, are selling ransomware as a service, meaning that it's so much more easier for cyber criminals to launch large scale attacks on the globe. And, and Vivian, you want to say something about internal threats since you're talking about um, Active Directory today? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, 
uh, even though we see a lot of migration happening nowadays, uh, let's say people are moving to the cloud, I truly believe that uh, on-prem active directory is here to stay for at least uh, the next five to 10 years. I see that only medium and large, and I'm sorry, uh, small and medium enterprises are moving to the cloud. But uh, to put it yeah. in perspective, I truly believe that at least 60% of the organization would be operating on a hybrid mode and yeah. only 40% will be moving to the cloud. And what that means is, uh, talking about the third point here, we'll have to monitor your Active Directory infrastructure. We'll have to watch out for yep. uh, the actions done by your users. It can be an accidental action or uh, an action performed by a rogue user. So this is what I mean by internal threats on the rise. Your users are smart. Your technicians yep. get smarter. The technology that uh, they get to know uh, nowadays is kind of uh, not, a, 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 you know, a lightweight technology. So everyone ha nowadays have access to Google. Everyone nowadays have access to scripts. And they would try their hands out in a Windows infrastructure and uh, try their luck out. So it becomes really important from an administrative standpoint to watch out for your users, groups, uh, computers, and contacts inside of your Active Directory infrastructure. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, so these are these are these are all making it very hard for us to track what's going on in our network. Mm -hmm. Right. And you have uh, IoT, which is basically connecting more and more devices um, on the network, mm -hmm. which means the attack surface is so much more larger. So if someone is trying to uh, breach your organization. They now have a lot more surface that they can target to make their first um, entry uh, into your network. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. So the, there are just so many challenges. And, 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 and above all of this, we we're getting new data protection regulations that are mandating that we do certain things as best practices in, in IT. And there are breach reporting requirements, uh, particularly today, because we are a lot of you are coming from uh, from the EU. Uh, of course, a lot of you have to comply with the GDPR and the GDPR itself has a mandatory breach reporting requirement um, in it. Right. You have Article 33, which says that every breach has to be uh, reported uh, within 72 hours. Right? So we just we're just seeing this this stat a uh, couple of slides ago where it says companies are taking months, right, 150 plus days to discover a domain controller uh, compromise. And then now we have um, we've we've seen a lot of challenges. And above that, we have uh, regulations that are that are forcing us to be in a position to detect and report breaches within a short stipulated time frame, 72 hours in the case of the GDPR. Oh, yes. I mean, this makes an administrator sound more like a lawyer. No. <laughs> so yeah. you have to understand Article 33 and what it says is the second clause of the Article 33. I mean, it's, yeah. it's kind of complicated. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Of course, uh, it's, it's not all bad news. It, it is hard out there if you're in security. There are a lot of challenges that you have to deal with, but technology has also uh, advanced to try to meet the needs of the market and to, to, to be able to tackle some of these more uh, advanced challenges that we've seen. And, and in particular, and we're going to just look at some of these things over the course of, of the session, but these are some of the trends that I wanted to share with you because uh, if you're looking to mature as a security team, you need to ensure that these kinds of um, advancements are part of your arsenal, right? And obviously advanced correlation and analytics is, is, is the big thing in IT and security today. You need to be in a position to not only ingest um, event information, but also form associations and, and make powerful correlations to discover threats that would have otherwise been missed, right? And we, and in particular, public cloud auditing and monitoring we, we looked at in the we, we spoke about the loss of visibility as as people are moving to the cloud using Azure, AWS, Office 365, other cloud platforms, maybe Salesforce applications. So it's, it's, all of those things need to be tracked at the end of the day. And Sim Solutions are making sure that those data sources are, are also available. Absolutely. Absolutely. And touching upon the third point here is, I mean, we've talked about regulations like the GDPR and you have PCI DSS and whatnot. So next year you might have another regulation somewhere in Australia. So uh, the point that I'm trying to get at is uh, when there is a new requirement in place in terms of a regulation, the administrators need to be prepared. And the only way by which administrators can keep up with the ever-growing demand of, uh, let's say, the regulatory bodies is by uh, adopting newer technologies. And when I say newer technologies, I cannot skip an important component uh, uh, in terms of the technology, which is machine learning. Now, now think about this. 
if you can apply the concept of machine learning to your users inside of your organization, that would be fantastic. Right. So if you were able to understand the behavioral pattern of your users, let's say you have 500 users and all 500 of them have different access roles inside of Active Directory, different permission levels, uh, different uh, servers, they access VPN access. So if machine learning can uh, understand or arrive at a data model for every user inside of your organization, that's going to be a lot more accurate than manual uh, scaling. So every time when there's a deviation from that regular behavior, that can be brought to your notice. So that's a, the advantage of machine learning that we see that has been incorporated uh, in, the, in, in most of the SIM solutions out there in the market. So I feel that bringing in machine learning to your SIM is going to uh, help you in the long run. Absolutely. So and these, so these, are, these are technologies that we need to um, keep up with right in, in IT and security we need to ensure things like these advanced analytics machine learning all of these are part of um, our security defenses and with, with that in mind I cannot uh, move on before talking about threat intelligence because this is again an area where we've made great strides in recent years because threat intelligence is really a good way of blocking a lot of the known malicious threats that are out there, right? So we know that there are so many bad domains and, and uh, known uh, problems out there. Why not integrate that information with our SIM solution so that by just doing that, we're able to automatically tick many of the checkboxes uh, when it comes to blocking threats, right? And the, fi and the final thing that I want to touch upon uh, is on security orchestration and integrations. Right. You, you ultimately want to make sure all of the tools that you've bought are, are integrated and are talking with each other and data can flow through seamlessly. Right. So insights from one tool can be fed into another tool uh, so that in an ideal situation, uh, we are able to uh, make sure that the end to end, your, your end to end security process is, is good. Right. So this is, this is important. Sim solutions being integrated with, um, tools, maybe a help desk tool, for example, uh, more and more event sources as well. So this, this is really just to get the best out of all that you have, uh, that you have actually paid money to buy. All right. So the point that we are trying to get at is in this slide, everything boils down to one thing. So when you have advancements in SIM in terms of newer technologies, please adopt newer technologies because or the only way by which administrators can keep up with the ever-growing demands of the market is by adopting newer technologies. So, and, and I'm not here to say adopt newer technology and forget your worries. No, not that. Understand the implications of that technology and see what part of it can be applied to your organization. So understanding your infrastructure and adopting to newer technologies is the way when it comes to cybersecurity moving forward. Yep. But let's start. We've looked at advanced things. We've said a lot of complicated things like machine, uh, more new age things uh, rather, like machine learning and advanced analytics. Oh yes. But of course, without having the basics in place, without doing the prerequisites and basics right, there is no point having a, a cutting edge machine learning uh, or user behavior analytics platform uh, if you're not tracking the basic security events. So with that in mind, I want to hand it over to Vivin, who's going to talk about uh, in particular, he's going to focus on the Active Directory um, side of auditing um, and why it is important to have alarms uh, for various different scenarios to understand um, attacks uh, and discover attacks at an early stage before they develop. Right? So I'm going to just uh, hand it over to Vivin and he's going to give you some interesting use cases and, and crucial events to track in your, uh, in your environment, uh, in Active Directory in particular, that you can now look at implementing in your organization if you're not already doing All right. it. Right. Let's do this then. So enough talking and it's time for us to share some uh, practical security use cases that you can put to use in your uh, organization right now after this webinar is over. No matter which uh, some solution that you're using from uh, any vendor out there in the market. Now before that I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, do you ever use or have you ever used Fitbit? Um, yes, I've used Fitbit. Okay, now I used to have Fitbit too. So Fitbit had this uh, uh, nice little uh, thing on my, I mean, nice little watch. But uh, the problem is Fitbit uh, just gave me raw data when I just yep. had a look at it, right? So it tells you that you have walked 2,000 steps, you walked 5,000 steps. That I would uh, assume or that I would like to think of as raw data, yep. right? Now, the way by which uh, I can transform data to information is 
uh, Fitbit gave me an app, a yep, mobile app, yep. right? Yeah, you know that. So we had a Fitbit app and uh, you have it uh, in your phone and then you just have a look at the phone, open up the app and then data gets transformed to information. Okay. Yep. Now we are making progress. That's exactly what we want uh, with regards to reading information from our logs too. But just information is not enough, right? You should be getting a meaningful information or in other words, insights from the information. Now, how do you get insights? Now, the way by which you get insights is you add an indicator to the existing information, right? Now, if you just take a look at the screenshot, you would notice a, a pink dotted line. Right, so that is an indicator. Now that tells me, that indicator tells me that I have crossed uh, 7,442 steps today at this point in time, but I will have to walk an additional 2,000 odd steps to complete my weekly target, right? So the app does all the calculation and it tells me that you'll have to walk more, yep. which I don't like. Yeah. So now, draw data just because you had an app gets transformed to information, and you added an indicator to the information in hand, which uh, now leads you to action, which yep. is walking an additional 2,000 steps. Applying the same concept to your Windows logs can be very, very helpful. Reading information from the security logs of the event viewer uh, in, uh, in, let's say, uh, uh, an auditing application is good, but that's just information. So how do you get insight from the information is by actually uh, knowing what track and then setting it up as indicators of compromise in your SIM solution. So talking about Windows, the first case or the first use case is understanding password attacks. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not going to be uh, talking about brute force, I'm not going to be talking about rainbow table or dictionary attacks. They have been in the market for a long time. I'm going to be talking about a, a, a not so common attack pattern which is uh, specifically to the Windows accounts, okay? Password spraying. Now, one way by which I could compromise, or let's say, talking about the brute force, okay? A brute force has a specific pattern, and that pattern is, I choose an account, that is the victim, or uh, that is the target, let's say, and then I hit the target account three times or four times, and then the fifth time, maybe I succeed. So. Multiple failures followed by a sudden success is the pattern of a regular brute force attack. So if you have a SIM solution, chances are your SIM solution is already watching out for such patterns. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something a bit, uh, you know, offbeat, which is I choose, I don't choose one account. I choose all your known accounts inside of Active Directory. Let me give you one name, a uh, known account, the administrator, okay? So I choose all those known accounts inside of Active Directory and I don't hit one account more than once with a password. So what I do is I have a password that I computed using password generating algorithms with all the complexities in place like it should be seven characters, it should have special uh, characters, it should have numbers and all that stuff. And I have a password and I spray that password once on every user inside of your organization until I meet with a success. So that is password spraying attack. Now, how would you detect or how would you set an indicator of compromise for password spraying from the security logs? Now, please watch out for event IDs 4625, 529, and 675. All these event IDs getting mapped to your well-known accounts inside of Active Directory and that too happening within less than five minutes, okay? So when you have 4625 recorded for your administrative accounts in less than five minutes, or let's say less than 60 seconds, that's for sure a password spray attack. So action item number one, get the list of your sensitive accounts inside of Active Directory. Watch out for event ID 4625 from the security log in order to understand password spray. Yep. So, so this is the first. Uh, this is the first step usually, right? In an attack kill chain, we usually start off with a credential getting compromised. That's usually the first thing that attackers try to do. Now, let me ask a question to all our attendees. Now, what would you do, say, if just another user, John from your sales team, um, for whatever reason, has been uh, added to the domain admins group in Active Directory? All right. Do you have a problem there? A big problem. Yep. A very big problem. All right. 
Now that takes me to my second use case, which I think all my admins out there listening to this record, uh, this uh, session should be auditing. I, I'm pretty sure that you would be auditing this. If not, please do it right away. Let me tell you why. There are two aspects to groups or uh, securing your Active Directory groups because they are basically things that decide your uh, permissions instead of Active Directory. So one aspect of securing your group is group nesting. Okay, let me give you an example of group nesting. A uh, help desk technician who's a direct member of a help desk security group instead of Active Directory is a help desk technician unless and until uh, uh, only up to the point uh, where the help desk technician group is not nested. Now, if the help desk technician security group is in turn nested to an elevated group like domain admins instead of Active Directory, now what that makes my help desk technician? A domain admin. All right. So when you look at the number of sensitive accounts or administrative accounts instead of Active Directory, please don't go, uh, you know, and then get the list of your domain admins and say that I have 10 domain admins. So these are the number of administrators. No, it doesn't work that way. So what if your VPN access group, which is going to be a basic group instead of Active Directory, has seven members in it and that VPN access group is in turn nested to domain admins. All these seven users who are direct members of VPN access group are domain admins yeah. now. Right. So you should be knowing on a day to day basis who is being added, who is being removed from the domain admins group. And the only way by which you would get to know that is by monitoring the event IDs that you see on the screen. Right. Because just think about this enterprise admins group. What can that group do? It can do anything and everything yep. instead of Active Directory. And do we have to use enterprise admins on a daily basis? No. Because not many administrators create a new forest on a daily basis. That's the role of enterprise admins. Schema admins. Do you extend your schema ad, uh, groups? I mean, Active Directory schema on a daily basis? No. It is a powerful group and people are still there in that group and you don't use that group on a daily basis. So even if you cannot empty the membership of such top level sensitive groups, at least audit who's being added or who's being removed from the group. So that's the event IDs that you see on the screen. All right. So the first uh, thing in my attack kill chain was compromising a credential. The second use case was about elevating the rights of a credential instead of Active Directory. What do you think the third one is going to be? Lateral yeah. movement, right? Because if I am an attacker and if I compromise an account instead of Active Directory and I elevate it to domain admins, I will not let go of that account unless and until I have the information that I want from your organization. And in order to do that, I will not be moving across your network laterally with my account that I've managed to compromise. Instead, I will be using another account and I will use that account as a relay account in order to laterally move across your network. Because even if that account gets compromised, my identity is still safe. I am still the domain admin, the silent domain admin inside of your organization watching everything that you're doing. So how would you watch out for lateral movements? How would you write a case for lateral movements? There are n number of cases that you can think of, but one common way by which you can track uh, lateral movement is new service installations. Now, come on. How often do you uh, see a new service on your workstation, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely. And on your servers, uh, close, even close to that. So we'll have to make sure that we watch out for new service installations and the logs that you're going to read information from is going to be the security logs of the event viewer. And the event ID 4697 is going to tell you when our new uh, service is installed. Right. I'm not saying that all 4697s are suspicious, but I'm saying there are possibilities of suspicious 4697s to be present inside your security log. There's a big difference. Yeah. So watch out for 4697s. They can be legitimate or they can be suspicious. I want you to track 4697 from uh, at least your confidential servers. If not all the 100 servers that you have in your infrastructure, at least the confidential yeah. ones. Let's say your finance servers. Uh, let's say if you're in, the, in, your, uh, in, in a hospital sector, your server uh, that has user information or patient information in them. Watch out for 4697. So, Vivian, you've given us um, basically things to watch out for uh, in three parts of the attack kill chain, right? Mm -hmm. right from the credential compromise uh, all the way to the lateral movement. Absolutely. So, um, can you give us a use case which 
most of us out there, most of the administrators at least, uh, can relate to in terms of uh, an auditing benefit for administrative reasons. Absolutely. So uh, the case that I'm going to be talking about right now uh, has a lot of administrative benefits. Apart from being a strong security case, it does have a lot of administrative uh, benefits too. Uh, the reason why I say it has administrative benefits is Every organization has this common problem, which is lockouts, right? So you have users getting locked out and the, and the administrator gets a call or a ticket and then uh, the administrator verifies the user's identity or phone and then, or you have some sort of self-service system, uh, uh, that's, that's a wise decision. But if not, it's going to be a call, right? You verify the user's identity, you unlock the account and the user carries on with the task. But what if, okay, what if, Five minutes after you unlock the user's account, the user calls you again say, and saying, my account is locked out again. So you can understand now that the problem is not with the user typing in his or her credentials incorrectly. The problem is elsewhere. Now, what if the user's credential is configured as a service in one of uh, your boxes and that service is still using an old password to authenticate your domain controllers and the authentication crosses five times, which is the threshold of lockout the account will get locked out again. So the point that I'm trying to get at is, whenever an account is locked out, it can reveal something more than a lockout to you, right? What if uh, a, a credential is configured somewhere which you did not even notice or did not even think of? So th that could be a possible yep. uh, point of entry for an att attacker when you do not know where the credentials are spread across the network. So it's very important to understand the source that is causing the lockout, not just the user typing in the password incorrectly, for which I want you to monitor two events, 4740 and 4625, from the security logs of your event viewer again. Now, trust me, your security log can give you any story that you'd like to hear from a security standpoint. It's up to you to tune into the right frequency and to listen to those stories. So 4740, 4625 are going to give you the stories about lockouts. So if you have AD Audit Plus in place, uh, for using these two event IDs, which is 4740 and 4625, you'll be able to spin a, such a security story with regards to lockout. If your credential, what this does is, with, when we have these two event IDs in place, we'll be able to uh, look at eight different places that an account could be possibly configured and if the account is configured somewhere else, we just give you yes, the account is being used as a logon uh, in one of the console. If the account is used uh, in one of the processes, it is used in one of the network drive mappings. All you have to do is just lo log into that box, update the credentials of the user, get the problem fixed. This is what I meant by administrative benefits uh, of auditing lockouts with those two event IDs. All right, now call me stupid, but this case is not that lame, right? This is something that most of the administrators overlook, okay? I understand that most of you out there listening to this uh, webinar uh, would, would agree with me if I say that you don't trust your antivirus anymore, right? So we don't trust, your, uh, trust our antivirus anymore. Our antivirus is there in a, a your organization, but we don't trust them because if I'd said that antivirus is going to give you protection against uh, some of the attacks, uh, if, if I were to give the statement in 2000, yes, you'd be with me. But when I say that in 2019, uh, you would think that I'd be uh, kidding, yeah. right? It doesn't make sense. But the point is, how many of you listening to this webinar actually feed your antivirus logs to your SIM solution? You know, you want to know the reason why? Is it important to feed your AV logs to your SIM solution? I'll give you a reason. If I am, a, a, let's say, a payload writer or an attacker, okay, and I'm trying to deploy a payload, a malware, uh, into your organization via a phishing uh, email or, let's say, a phishing website, right, and I failed to test my payload against the antivirus, and I deploy it in your end. And your antivirus actually catches the presence of an abnormal file or an extension. And you now feed your AV logs to your SIM solution. And your SIM solution alerts you in real time saying virus detected on a server. Now, I don't care whether you clean the virus on the server or not. 
the important question that I want you to ask to your uh, incident handling team is how did the virus get on the server? Okay, because when you backtrack the path of that specific virus, you'll be able to arrive at either a suspicious or blacklisted IP address or a blacklisted port. Yep. Right. So your AV logs could reveal a far more important story in terms of detecting stupidity done by the attackers. So that's one point uh, that I wanted to share with you. Feed your AV logs to your SIM solution. Now we have covered the Windows side of your infrastructure. But what about the rest of the network? Sid, uh, I would appreciate if you could just uh, touch upon yep. some of the other important, equally important aspects of any organization and probably give us some nice uh, cases that we can put to use in our infrastructure. Yeah, so obviously all of these uh, things that you see on this uh, slide, uh, all of us have uh, firewalls, routers, databases, and, and all of these other devices in our network, right? So what we strongly recommend from Manage Engine is that you look at securing Active Directory um, as your starting point, you sort of, because a lot of attacks um, start over there, there are log on activities and accesses and, and all of that kind of uh, thing that happens. So we recommend um, securing and auditing and securing Active Directory and then looking at implementing the same kind of um, security policies on the other parts uh, of your network, right? So that's what I'm going to walk you through for the next 10 minutes um, before we look at a few final um, uh, challenges and, and, and some misconceptions with IT security uh, before finally winding up, right? So this is, this is the idea. This is what we want. Um, ultimately, we want to find out what all assets we have in our network mm -hmm. and then implement these logging policies on the assets, bring in the data, schedule reports so that we can review security events periodically and set up alerts to detect misuse. All right, so you mean to say that an administrator should have this flow in mind whenever they are implementing a SIM solution and trying to secure their network? Exactly, that, that, this is the basic thing that we're trying to achieve. And okay. I know most of us know this and implementing it is really the challenge. Oh, but yes. What we want ideally is reports coming into us every morning to tell us that these are the events that happen, maybe a few things that have been flagged uh, in the report that can be investigated. Mm -hmm. And we want to set up these alerts so that we get notified in, in near real time when misuse events happen. All right. right. So I'm going to just show you an example. I'm actually going to jump in quickly to uh, the event log analyzer component of our SIM solution log 360. And I just want to show you what kind, uh, what I actually mean when I say that uh, a SIM solution is detecting these complex attacks for you, right? I want to show you the example and, and then sort of um, come back and show you some basic events that you need to track in order to achieve, um, in order to achieve this level of correlation, right? So I have some simulated data. So I'm just going to show you how um, we're able to detect uh, the installation of a suspicious service on a Windows server. Right. So Vivin, Vivin mentioned and he asked you how many of you install uh, and run a service on one of your critical servers every day. Yep. Right. It's not supposed to happen. Not under normal circumstances mm -hmm. anyway. So so what you can see the product has actually detected is a chain of events that has happened between um, 1748 p.m. Uh, to 1751. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is about three and a half minutes. So there's a lot of activity happening in the network and the product in particular has picked up about 10 events, you can see a bunch of uh, log on activity here. You can see uh, five or six times a Windows account fails to log on. That's definitely suspicious. Yeah. That's suspicious already. And then successful log on. And now it's like, okay, wait, something really might be up mm -hmm. because it's all happened within a minute. And then it says uh, 49 seconds later, a service is installed on Windows. And then again, about 40 seconds later, a service is started. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. It doesn't look good. You don't mm -hmm. want this. If this were to happen, uh, in a network, you'd want the security team to be alerted, mm -hmm. right? So you can see that there are log on events happening, followed by some sort of system activity. Yep. So if you're not tracking these individual events, mm -hmm. there is no way you can actually associate and correlate these to actually detect um, such an attack pattern, right? So this is, I just wanted to give you this one simple example. Uh, attacks, of course, can get more advanced uh, than this, but this was just to give you an idea that Unless you're doing the basics right, unless we've been talking about Active Directory, for example, and unless you're tracking, say, logons, accesses, uh, group changes, 
and and these basic uh, different kinds of events there is no way that even the most powerful tool will be able to associate things right if there's nothing to associate what is it going to do so i want to walk you through just four or five uh, simple things that all of us can relate to uh, and i want you to see if you can implement um, a tracking mechanism for these kinds of events right so the first thing is of course system events and and this ties back to the example that i just showed you um, it's a it's a known fact that any malicious activity whether it's any malware or ransomware is going to trigger some system event right some service is going to get started maybe some process is going to execute something is going to get launched maybe the machine shuts down right these are things that we know are associated to an attack mm -hmm. so why aren't we tracking it oh yeah right why aren't we tracking something that we know is not supposed to happen if we know that an installation uh, a service installation is not supposed to happen on one of our critical servers shouldn't it, shouldn't we be tracking what is not supposed to happen so that when it does happen we know something is up okay so you basically say that we'll have to have a security baseline in place or yeah. every organization already has that when there's a deviation in that security baseline yep. it definitely has to be brought to the notice of the incident handling team in real time absolutely even your example that you said um, group membership change someone getting added to enterprise admin mm -hmm. or creating to create a new forest for example yeah, yeah. not supposed to happen so all of these multiple cases that we know are are not supposed to happen ever mm -hmm. uh, or almost never when it does happen we need to be notified oh yes right so th that's the idea so system events is one thing and then you've got data accesses and modifications right again ultimately in a data exfiltration there is going to be a data access and probably a modification or a copy or something like that ransomware yeah ransomware again ransomware is going to create uh, create multiple file encryptions which is a, effectively a change in extension so we should be tracking this it's going to modify things it's going to encrypt mm -hmm. so maybe if say 100 modifications happen within a few seconds yep. you know that it's ransomware because that's not supposed to happen mm -hmm. and the only way you can detect that is if you're tracking the basic uh, file folder uh, access and modification activities with the right, right SACLs in place and Absolutely. understand your auditing priority so that when an alarm goes off you know that uh, you know the exact reason for the alarm uh, that went off yeah exactly you want you want to have that basic uh, system in place right we talk about the experts talk about the four vital w's mm -hmm. right the who the when the which and the what so we need to know uh, when it comes to our the data which is whether it's in our file servers or database we need to stay on top of it we need to process this event information mm -hmm. um, so that we can then detect the more um, advanced attacks and and data exfiltration scenarios yeah. right so so that that's another thing i want you to keep in mind and then web server activity now this is a, often a point of entry for attackers right web servers are are front end they're, they're customer facing oh, yes. which also means that it's an opportunity for someone who's trying something malicious mm -hmm. uh, for them to get into your network right maybe they try to execute something malicious on your web server right try to upload something malicious mm -hmm. so it's very important to keep again just keep tracking these basic things who's visiting the site what requests are you getting where are the requests coming from uh, the files that are being uploaded or downloaded and then errors right what if there is a fluctuation um, a sudden um, influx you suddenly have a bunch of HTTP 200 errors for example uh, that could mean that something suspicious or, or or an attack activity such as denial of service is taking place right so this is these are not it's very important to be tracking these simple things because ultimately when something goes wrong you will notice that there is a sudden spike or or something uh, that gets flagged right and and you've got known attack patterns sql injection cross site scripting and these are attacks that have been around for so long oh ages, ages and now. that we know that yep. we know the attack pattern we know how sql injection takes place mm -hmm. so it's very important to have these rules built into our sim solution so that if we know that this is how sql injection takes place why aren't we leveraging that information okay. to actually detect it Right? It's not a new attack. SQL injection has been around for 10, 15 years or, or more, a lot more probably. So we know the pattern. So we just it's, a, it's just a matter of having that rule implemented in the SIM solution so that we're at least able to track the known attacks. Right? Okay. We'll worry about the unknown at, as step two, but let's first make sure known attacks are being, um, the known uh, attacks are being 
uh, mitigated. It makes sense because you started off with the topic like getting the basics right. Basics, yeah. yeah. We will we focus on this first. And then I, I want to talk about just one more thing, which is firewall traffic, right? Firewalls, um, we, we, at a given point, you need to know whether the traffic in your network is, is, is malicious uh, or not, right? You, you want it to be healthy, uh, but in case there is any malicious interaction within your network, you need to be notified immediately. So it becomes very important to track the traffic based on the source, right? Where it's coming from, uh, the destination, where it's headed and the protocol. Right? Because again, these are uh, opportunities to identify anomalies, spikes, right? What is there's a sudden uh, excess traffic from one particular IP address, right? Maybe th they're trying to compromise your network. Maybe they're, uh, it's a, something like a denial of service uh, situation, right? And, and protocol, what if you have, um, you have SSH traffic, for example, and, and you see and you notice that uh, the percentage of SSH traffic has increased tenfold uh, suddenly on a given day, uh, that could mean that there is a compromised host sitting in your network, right, which would require an investigation. So you really need to know where the traffic is coming from and where it's going to. Um, and it becomes very important when you're investigating uh, a breach that has already happened. Right. So if you notice that one IP address caused a problem on on one of your servers, you need to then revisit your firewall logs and, and sort of copy paste that same IP address um, into a search query uh, to know um, what other interactions that IP address did with your network. What is the digital trail of that specific IP address uh, in your network? So what are the other boxes or what are the other components in your network that and the IP has yeah. uh, communicated with or touched against? So, yeah. and, the, and the only way to do that is if you're from the start tracking your firewall traffic, right? Yeah. There's no point um, getting breached and then if you don't have the data to search through, um, there, there's nothing even the most advanced uh, cyber forensics uh, services team can, can do for you. Okay, so, so you mean to say that search is a very important part of a SIM solution. The more effective the search is, the higher absolutely. the chances of you getting at the uh, source of the problem. Exactly. And to do the search in the first place, you need the data. Absolutely. Right? There's, you, if you've not logged these events, you can't, then there's nothing there's to search. No having yeah, search. Yeah. Comp yeah, that's just logical. And this is one final thing, though, before we um, move on to the last now, I was segment. about to ask you this. So uh, all the information is out there in the logs, but what if someone actually clears Cheap. the logs, right? Now, how do we secure an organization against clearing of logs? Because I've seen that most of the cases when, uh, when an exfiltrator leaves the organization, more often than not, the logs are being cleared Cheap. so that yep. the audit trail is not there. So, yes. Well, you, you actually just said it, that we know that if someone is going to uh, carry out an attack, they may try to shut down the logging service or clear the logs, right? You just said that this is what they do. So mm -hmm. why aren't we tracking it? Why aren't security teams tracking when the audit policy changes or when the uh, logging service is shut down or when the logs are cleared, mm -hmm. right? So we should, this is uh, attempts. What if once you've collected the logs and you've ar archived it, what if someone tries to uh, tamper tamper the logs, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. So this is, uh, this is again, just we, we keep coming back to this, that if we know certain things are not supposed to happen mm -hmm. uh, in an ideal situation. So when, when it does happen, uh, we need to be tracking it. And this is a classic example that logs, attackers know how important they are. And when things, if someone shuts down the logging service or tampers with the logs, you, your system needs to be able to notify you for that because that sort of becomes an ultimate indicator of compromise. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so, so yeah, so we, we, we just coming to the end of the segment and, and we just, before we uh, finish the presentation, we thought we'd just uh, leave you with a few words of um, advice from what we've seen, certain common IT security mistakes, um, and before before moving on finally to questions that you should ask to your vendor. So Vivian, if you could just walk us through a few uh, common mistakes that you've seen um, while speaking at events and interacting with administrators. Oh, yes. I'd like to start with step number one. What is step number one with regards to a SIM solution is uh, understanding what to audit and what not to audit because not one size fits all. Every organization might, might have a different auditing requirement. Uh, for example, if an organization is uh, spread across multiple uh, geographical locations, you might be more interested in knowing your, uh, in monitoring your firewall logs and network logs. Or if you're just an organization placed or located in one place uh, inside of the geography, then you might be more interested in knowing 
uh, your user logs, which is the security logs in the event viewer, and also some of the other logs as well, SQL and application logs. So prioritizing log sources, that's step number one. Now step number two is understanding your auditing requirements, okay? Know what to audit and know what not to audit because you do not want your system to be too noisy. There's no point in you getting 100 emails per day just for log on failures. Right. That was just an example. So you should know what is your requirement in order for you to avoid uh, your sim solution being too noisy or too quiet at that point. And in fact, Vivian, you, it's so it's it's such a coincidence that exactly when you were about to mention this, one of our attendees, Hamsa, just asked a question, which is how can I detect false positives and this is this is the answer what you just said that this is why prioritizing your log sources and 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 sort of uh, ensuring that you're not getting an alert fatigue way too many alerts uh, right we, we need to it, it becomes very important to configure the optimal audit policy so that you don't get false positives in the first place right it's not about detecting false positives but it's to make sure that you don't get too many alarms in the first place. Absolutely, and I'd like to add something here now that we have a, a question. Of course, we have lots of questions, but this question is specific to uh, you know avoiding false positives. So nowadays you have newer technologies like machine learning. So exactly, bring yeah. in machine learning yeah. and look for solutions that have uh, user behavior analytics or user entity behavior analytics out there. So. Those, when you bring in machine learning, the machine learning does the heavy lifting for you. Exactly. It helps you understand user behavior, entity behavior, and then it tells you, hey, this is wrong. When, when, when the machine tells you this is wrong, the chances of the precis I mean, uh, it being precise is uh, close to 100%. So, so it's that's... about not bringing false positives in the first place. Yeah. 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 So the next thing is uh, about cost. Yeah, the third point is about cost. Now I have this. I have seen this common notion with at least some of the decision makers out there in uh, in the organizations. When I have a uh, when I have a conversation with CIO, uh, the CIO uh, who's not been in the field, uh, let's say in the recent years, has this basic notion. Not everyone, but at least some that I've interacted with. Higher the price, greater the value. That's not the case always, right? Yep. That's not the case always. Please. Understand your requirements. If your requirement is more towards security auditing or if you're, it's more towards, let's say, active directory auditing, look out for a solution out there in the market that does that, right? And why pay five times, ten times the cost in order to, uh, you know, map your requirement with a solution out there in the market? It doesn't make sense to me. Yep. Evaluate your requirements and then evaluate the solution without understanding your requirements if you're just going about the top of the top player in the market. Yes, the top player in the market does a lot of things, but what if you just want you, two yeah. out of the 10 things that you they're don't. offering? Exactly. Yeah, that's my point. And, and while we're on, on costs, uh, I think a lot of the time people um, neglect the implementation and support and maintenance costs. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Because you might, you might well it just, if it, like you said, if you have just uh, two or three specific requirements that you're trying to solve and you end up buying a big uh, SIM solution, a $50,000 or $100,000 solution for just solving a simple problem, you're also going to waste about a, f a few months in training to just solve such a simple problem. Exactly. Install it today and get it working after four months. That doesn't yep. work. And just think about the knowledge transfer that has to uh, take place when an administrator leaves the organization. Yep. It's not something that you can overlook. Especially for these more what we think are basic scenarios such as account lockouts. We, we think that that is something that if you have a tool, you should be able to get alerted for account lockouts from day one of deployment. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's very silly if you need so much of training and, and um, months of, of deployment just to solve basic use cases. Right. So uh, just completing a couple of uh, quick, uh, couple, two more points very quickly. Uh, one thing is we, we see that a lot of organizations focus on preventive solutions alone. And the whole point of today's session has been that we clearly need more and we need to look at a second layer of defense, which is to bring in um, monitoring, uh, monitoring techniques so that when these preventive solutions fails, we are in a position to detect when things go wrong. Right. And the last point goes without saying, which is that um, yes, security technologies and investment investing in security technologies is important, but it's very important to spend a lot of time to understand your current security posture and what your goals are for the immediate 
uh, months ahead for your security and compliance. So yes. to, to really put some thought into that before uh, buying all of the solutions. True. So just last two, two, three minutes of this session, we just want to uh, leave you with a few questions that you can ask uh, if you're already using a SIM solution to ask your current vendor, or if you're evaluating a solution to ask uh, the vendor that you're evaluating. So Vivin, can you just quickly run us through some of the things? Uh, absolutely. The, this is what I call as a checklist, right? When you evaluate a vendor, a SIM vendor out there, or when you're planning to switch to another vendor, please have this checklist in place. Number one is, I want you to ask your vendor whether they support for agent-based and agent-less log collection because log collection is the fundamental for a SIM solution and if that is not done proper, the rest of the chain would fail. So there are areas inside of your network that does not have, let's say, log retrieval if you, if you do not uh, deploy an agent. So your SIM solution should support agent-based and agent-less log collection. Now the second step, that takes me to the second step, after you've collected your logs, you'll have to process your logs. So your SIM solution not only has to collect logs from multiple log sources, at least 700 log sources I would say, now get those logs and how fast is your processing engine? Because there's no point in getting information five minutes after the time of an attack. It should be not, if not real time, at least near to real time, yep. so which means your log processing engine or rate has to be, let's say, really, really good. And the third point is, after you process your logs and get the information that you want in form of alerts, in form of reports, are you looking at log data on a daily basis? That's the point. Right. Yeah. So certain regulations out there uh, want you to yep. monitor logs on a daily basis for integrity. And PCI DSS is a good example. Absolutely. Like, uh, it, it mandates that you're reviewing security incidents on a daily basis, 24 hours at a minimum. You know, ideally they say that you should be doing it with a shorter time interval, but it's really important to have this periodic, at least a daily review of security events to make sure that at that point in time, you know, you're secure. Right. A few couple of things, fast targeted searches. You obviously want to make sure you're able to do that with your SIM solution. Why? Why? Because, uh, as you mentioned in your example, if I have a blacklisted IP present in one of my logs, you would want to know whether this IP has touched any yes. of the other yep. components in my network, any other confidential service. So fast targeted searches. Yes. And being able to set the alert, right? So you need to, um, the custom alerting especially, you know, you mentioned not running on autopilot. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of SIM solutions give pre-built support, which is very useful and, and very important, especially for small and medium enterprises. But to be having that uh, robustness and flexibility to set up an alert on any criteria from the incoming log messages, irrespective of the source, it could be an old legacy system, but to be able to, to get the GUI to, to set up an alert for any specific thing that um, your environment needs, right? Okay. So that, that's important. Oh, yes. And last but not the least, I'd like to uh, finish off with one important point here. Uh, it's, there's no point in actually uh, collecting, uh, let's say, loads and loads of logs and you don't store it securely, right? What if someone actually tampers the logs? Yep. yep. So the, the not, base not question, supposed to happen. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so you, you need to make sure that your logs, uh, once you've collected them, are automatically being archived and are encrypted, hashed, and timestamped to ensure the integrity and, and reliability of the logs in case you need to perform a forensic investigation. Oh, yes. And one thing that we'll have to keep in mind with regards to log storage is it shouldn't be eating up a lot of your storage. Sure, yeah. So the log should be compressed and the compression, and compression should be really effective, let's say close to 90-95 percentage, and then it has to be encrypted, as you, uh, as you said, hashed, yeah. and then timestamped. So a lot of lot of questions there for you guys to think about and a lot of things to ask your vendor and a lot of things to consider um, with your security teams. Um, unfortunately, our time is uh, up for the webinar. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that Manage Engine provides us an integrated SIM solution called Log360, which will uh, which helps uh, organizations uh, mitigate both external and internal attacks uh, through two of its modules, Event Log Analyzer and AD Audit Plus. Um, I'm not going to make this a sales demo and, and, and talk about the products, but in case you have any questions about what was discussed or any other questions that you have regards with regards to SIM or with regards to Manage Engine's SIM offering, uh, please do reach out to us on the live chat. 
for the next five minutes. We we are still here to answer your questions. Uh, just bear with us if you've not if your questions have not yet been answered because we'll answer them over the next uh, five or six minutes. Um, and in case you have uh, any questions that you would like to take offline, we have the support email mentioned on the slide log three sixty hyphen support at managingengine dot com. Okay. So do email us for any. Um, any product queries if, if, if you do have, right? And I, I just want to let you know that at the end of the webinar, when you, uh, when you quit and leave, do take 20 to 30 seconds of your valuable time to fill up the feedback form to let us know what you liked or, or suggestions for future webinars and talk shows, right? So I'm just going to um, stop talking now and quickly answer some of the questions that we've been getting on the live chat. Okay, I think we've been getting a lot of questions here. I'd like to just uh, pick a random question here. Yep. Uh, can you talk something about honeypots? Okay, now let me actually uh, talk about uh, a honeypot uh, scenario that comes to my mind right yep. now. Probably I'll stick to Windows, okay? Yep. Because this can be of, uh, put to use of uh, to most of the administrators out there. Now, every Active Directory installation out there in the world has some common accounts, okay? I do not know whether uh, your organization has an account by the name of Siddharth or yep. Sid, but I know for sure 100% that you have an account in the name of administrator, yep. right? So, creating an account, a, a honeypot with the administrator, how do you do it? Now, just go ahead, open up your Active Directory users and computers. You would have the administrator account right there. Rename the administrator account to maybe, let's say, um, we have a user here, Chiranjeev Nanda. Okay, rename uh, the account, the administrator account to Chiranjeev. And watch out for logon failures yep. for that, uh, uh, I mean, sorry, before that, yep. rename the administrator account and then create another account, a dummy administrator account, name it administrator. Yep. And watch out for logon failures for that dummy administrator account that you've created, uh, which is not part of any top level security group, just domain users. Yep. Now, when you have a hit, yep. when you have, when your SIM solution says uh, logon failure detected for administrator, your group of administrators know that Chiranjeev is the actual administrator, default administrator account, the one that you renamed, right? So if, if, if that originates from an internal IP address, then probably you can just uh, have a look at the IP, uh, go to the user, have have a, have a conversation, get things sorted out. If it's from an external IP address, yep. it's high time that you include that IP address to the blacklisted IPs and blacklisted uh, ports of your SIM solution. So that's one honeypot that you can create with a default administrator. And don't worry, you'll not lose track, track of the default administrator because the last three digits of the security identifier of the administrator account ends with 500. And that is in no way going to disturb your Active Directory infrastructure if you're going to rename the administrator account. So that's one. Uh, thank you for answering that, Vivin. Just one more question I'd like to uh, quickly touch upon. Uh, we have one of our attendees, uh, Muthu Kristen, asking if any idea to look for specific services started based on previous attack patterns. And, and that's actually a very good point because if we know that certain a known mal malware and, and, and ransomware and things like that are are, are specifically, um, are, we know certain services to be bad or certain processes to be known, that are known to be bad, uh, those rules uh, need to be configured with SIM solutions, right? So this is where it, it, if you're able to integrate um, data sources that are able to provide you with updated information of known, um, known malicious things, uh, that, 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 that itself is, is, a, is, is, is uh, information for you to work with, right? If you know that a new ransomware has been launched today, that is, for example, encrypting files with a particular file extension, why not start tracking your file servers for that particular file extension? Because you know that that is now proliferating across the globe. And the same extends to other things such as services and processes, right? If it's, that's why it's important to stay updated on the latest attacks and, and latest things that have happened so so that you you're able to configure those rules what you know is is now a bad thing out there um, configure those rules to be able to detect it if that happens in your in your organization all right now some adding uh, uh, to the point that you just mentioned now wouldn't it be nice if we have let's say 10 servers and all my 10 servers have let's say 20 service accounts each i have a list of all those service accounts and whenever I have a new service, I have an event yep. ID to track, which we have already shown in the previous slide. Yep. Of course, the slide would be shared with you. So when you know that you have in total, uh, let's say, 60 service accounts split across, let's say, six uh, uh, your servers, 
and you have a 61st service account yeah. and you are brought to notice in real time about the presence of new service installation, uh, then I think your problem will be fixed. Yeah. So how do you get the list of existing service account? Because you, you might have hundreds of service accounts. How do you get the list? Manage Engine has a free tool. If you could just Google up uh, Muthu Krishnan, this is for you. If you could just Google up in uh, in and in, 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 uh, like service account management tool from um, Manage Engine, that's a free tool, by the way. Uh, the others can also benefit from it. Yep. Download the tool, install it, and get the list of service account running on all your computers. Track them, and when you see a new service account, which is again can be tracked by using an event ID that I just showed you, then the chances of that service account being suspicious is very high. So yeah. So um, thank you so much for all of your questions. Um, unfortunately, we can't answer the remaining ones out loud, but we will um, just be there for a few more minutes to answer the questions on the live chat uh, that haven't yet been answered. So just stay with us for another two, three minutes in case your question hasn't been answered and we'll reply and we'll reply uh, on the live chat. Absolutely. I think we have loads and loads of questions. I hope the session was informative for you. Yep. And uh, hope to see you at another webinar or another session or you'd be getting us uh, getting an email with, let's say, such useful resources, not just product selling. So, yes, uh, thank you very much for your time and patience. Thank you, Siddharth. Yep. Thank you, Evan. So I, I hope it, it was just one out of packed information. So uh, I hope for all our attendees, this was a useful session. Um, thank you so much for joining us and, and hope to see you soon again at a Manage Engine online event. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.